Dear sisters, I'm so happy to be with you today. I really enjoyed preparing this talk, which isn't always the case with me. The topic I was given was squeeze the day. I've gone, a, I could have gone a lot of different ways with that one, but what I came up with is squeeze the day to me means get the most out of the life we were given, every last drop. Each one of us is different. We all have challenges and obstacles to maneuver around. We all have a choice in how we're going to bear the burdens, heartaches, health problems, and every other type of challenge. But we only have one life to live and appointed time on this earth. Let's make the most of it. First, I hope each of you knows without a shadow of a doubt that you are a precious, beloved daughter of God. Believe it, never doubt it. How easily we can forget when we know that we have sinned or felt hurt or in pain. I'll tell you what I've started doing. I have a sticky note in my car that I've written several statements on, and I see it almost every day at least twice. It says, I'm a beloved daughter of God. I'm a great mother and grandmother. I'm smart and several other statements. I'm not great all the time, but I want to see myself as great, and it pumps me up to try harder. If you haven't read the talk by President Hinckley entitled To the Women of the Church, I encourage you to do so. I wanted to put in some of his comments, and it got pretty lengthy, but please listen to what a prophet is saying to you. My dear sisters, you marvelous women who have chosen the better part. I stand in great admiration for all you do. I see your hands in everything. Many of you are mothers, and that is enough to occupy one's full time. Your companions, the very best friends your husbands have or will ever have. Your housekeepers, that doesn't sound like much, does it? But what a job it is to keep a house clean and tidy. Your shoppers, until I got older, I never dreamed of what a demanding responsibility it is to keep food in the pantry, to keep clothing neat and presentable, to buy all that is needed to keep a home running. Your nurses, with every illness that comes along, you're the first to be told about it and the first to respond with help. You're the family chauffeur. You're driving your children about on paper routes, taking them to athletic events, driving them onward on ward outings, calling here, there, and everywhere as they pursue their busy lives. You serve so well in the church. You think it's so demanding. It is, but with every responsibility fulfilled, there comes a great reward. Many of you think you are failures. You feel you cannot do well, that with all of your effort, it is not sufficient. We all feel that way. I feel that way as I speak to you tonight. I long for, I pray for the power and the capacity to lift you, to inspire you, to thank you, to praise you, and to bring a measure of gladness to your hearts. We all worry about our performance. We all wish we could do better, but unfortunately, we do not realize, we do often, we do not often see the results that come from what we do. Now, my dear sisters, that is the way with you. You're doing the best that you can. Do not nag yourself with a sense of failure. Get on your knees and ask for the blessings of the Lord. Then stand on your feet and do what you're asked to do. Then leave the matter in the hands of the Lord. You will discover that you have accomplished something beyond price. Close quote. I know that was a long quote. Please try to take it all in. A prophet of God has just told you how wonderful you are. Sister Bonnie Parkin said, we know, need to know that he sees the good in us. Feeling his love encourages us to press forward, reassures us that we are his, and confirms to us that he cherishes us even when we stumble and fall. My second point is I'd like to encourage each of you to choose to be happy or at least content. President Monson said, so much of in life depends on our attitude. The way we choose to see things and respond to others makes all the difference. To do the best we can and then to choose to be happy about our circumstances, whatever they may be, can bring peace and contentment. We can't direct the wind, 
but we can adjust the sails. For maximum happiness, peace, and contentment, may we choose a positive attitude." End quote. Sisters, I've lived almost a lifetime, over 50 years, not really thinking about how to be happy. I started doing some research, talking to friends, reading books, looking inside myself, and studying scriptures. I really wanted to know how to become happy. Now, I'm not happy all the time, but I can truly say that I'm happy after making some changes. We all know that challenges will come because they're a natural part of mortality. However, we don't have to be weighed down by discouragement and sadness. We can put our trust in the Lord and be positive. We can make it through with his, with his help. President Nelson said, the joy we feel has little to do with the circumstances of our lives and everything to do with the focus of our lives. When the focus of our lives is on God's plan of salvation and Jesus Christ and his gospel, we can feel joy regardless of what's happening or not happening in our lives. Joy comes from and because of him. For Latter-day Saints, Jesus Christ is joy. If you aren't already keeping a gratitude journal, I encourage you to do so. There's something to be grateful for every day. Secondly, look for the ways to help others every day. We can divert our negative thoughts by thinking of ways to help others. Serving also brings great happiness. Third, let us choose to be faithful and follow the commandments with all of our might. Elder Christofferson stated, Keeping the Lord's commandments enables us more fully and more easily to feel his love. The straight and narrow path of the commandments leads directly to the tree of life, and the tree and its fruit are the sweetest and most desirable above all things, are a representation of the love of God and fill the soul with exceedingly great joy. He goes on to say, God sees things in their true perspective and he shares that perspective with us through his commandments, effectively guiding us around the pitfalls and potholes of mortality toward eternal joy. So following the commandments enables us to feel God's love and also brings us joy and happiness. Feel his love, be happy, be a true disciple. Dear sisters, you are good enough as you are today. Our repentance and the Savior's atonement have given us what we need to make the most out of our lives through joy and peace. Heavenly Father will always love you. See yourself as God sees you. Embrace yourself. Keep learning. Be introspective and keep trying. Squeeze the day. Make the most out of the life you're given. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.